servo motor before starting with it let's understand the meaning of the word servo mechanism servo mechanism word it is a combination of two words servo plus mechanism servo is coming from the word servant or slave okay so servo mechanism is defined as So servo mechanism is defined as a closed loop control system in which a small input power it controls a larger output power in a strictly proportionate manner okay and in this servo mechanism the controlled variable or the output variable So servo mechanism in which we are converting a small input power, it controls a large output power and it is controlling in a strictly proportionate manner. So the controlled variable or the output variable of the servo motor, it is any of the mechanical variable like it can be position, it can be displacement or it can be uh, velocity, acceleration and this output variable or this uh, servo mechanism or the servo systems, they are used in automatic control systems. So the application of these servo systems is in automatic control systems so servo systems are used in automatic control systems and uh, these automatic control system they works on the error signals okay so they are converting these error signals these error signals they are used to drive the motors used in servo systems now the motors used in the servo systems they are known as the or they are called as servo motors So servo motors are what? They are the motors used in servo systems and these servo systems are used in automatic control system which works on the error signals. And what does this error signals do? These error signals, they drive the servo motors. So servo motors...
so servo motors they drive a final control element and these motors they are coupled to the shaft output shaft that is the load through the gear train for power matching because what the servo motors they are basically doing they are uh, matching they are that is uh, they are converting a small power into a large power okay in a proportionate manner so they have to be coupled to the output shaft that is the load through the gear train for matching of the power now these motors servo motors they are used to convert so why we are using these servo motors in control systems these motors they convert the electrical signal applied into the angular velocity that they are converting an electrical signal into a mechanical signal and that mechanical signal is the angular velocity or the movement of the shaft that is the electrical signal which is we are applying to the input of the servo motor it will cause the rotation of the shaft and the rotation that is the angular displacement of the shaft it is the output of the motor okay now what are the requirements which we expect from a good servo motor okay that is what are the requirements for a servo motor for better or good performance so let's see the requirements of a good servo motor the first requirement is that the inertia of the rotor should be as low as possible okay so the first requirement of a good servo motor is that the inertia of the rotor should be very low second requirement is that its response that is the response of the servo motor should be as fast as possible response should be fast that if we are applying or if we are changing the input signals then the servo motor quickly responds towards these changes so for quickly changing error signal quick response means for quickly changing error signals it must react with good response and how we can achieve this fast response this is achieved by keeping the torque to weight ratio high so the response of the servo motor should be as fast as possible it means that if the error signals they are changing that is that uh, they are changing their nature so with the change of the error signal the servo motor should react very quickly okay and how we can uh, and if this change in the error signal should not affect the performance of the servo motor now the third requirement of a good servo motor is it should have linear torque speed characteristics
okay fourth is that linear relationship between it should have linear relationship between the electrical control signal and the rotor speed over a wide range next it should be easily reversible its operation should be stable Okay, so let's summarize the requirements of a good servo motor. First is that the inertia of the rotor should be as low as possible. Second is its response should be as fast as possible. Third, it should have linear torque speed characteristics. Fourth is that the servo motor should have linear relationship between electrical control signal and the rotor speed over a wide range. It should be easily reversible and its operation should be stable without any oscillations or overshoot. And last we have that the motor can withstand the frequency starting operations. Okay, so these were the requirements of a good servo motor. Now let's study the types of servo motors. Now the servo motors they are classified depending upon the type of the electrical supply which is given to us. So they are classified depending upon the nature of the electric supply which is used for its operation so according to that this classification the servo motors they are classified into two types ac and dc servo motors AC servo motors they are using the electric supply that is AC supply and the DC servo motors they are using the DC supply. Further we can classify the DC servo motors into armature controlled and field controlled DC motors. So this is the classification of the servo motors. Servo motors are classified into AC and DC servo motors and DC servo motors are further classified into armature controlled and field controlled DC servo motors. Now let's study the DC servo motors first.
so dc servo motor it is basically more or less same as the dc motor okay so they are more or less same as normal dc motor the dc servo motors they are they behaves like a mechanical device so we see servo motors they behaves like a mechanical transducer and this transducer is converting the dc voltage into a mechanical signal and this mechanical signal is the angular displacement okay so let's highlight it that it is a mechanical transducer which is converting dc voltage into mechanical signal and this mechanical signal is the angular displacement now all the dc servo motors they are essentially separately excited type that is they are separately excited by the different supply voltages why we are using them as separately excited because it will ensures linear torque speed characteristics we have studied in the requirements of a good servo motor that a good servo motor should have linear torque speed characteristics so to have dc servo motor as linear torque uh, should have linear torque speed characteristics we should use them as separately excited type now the control of the dc servo motor that how we are controlling the dc servo motor so the control of the dc servo motor it can be from field side or armature side and depending upon this control the dc servo motors they are classified as either field controlled dc servo motors or armature controlled dc servo motors these are the two types of the dc servo motor now let us study these types of servo motors one by one first we will start with armature controlled dc servo motor in this servo motor the field current it is kept constant and the armature current it is varied
so in this motor what we are doing we are keeping the field current as a constant and we are varying this armature current to control the torque so the control of the servo motor is on the armature side that is why it is known as armature controlled dc servo motor now let's see the circuit diagram for it for the armature controlled DC servo motor, we have So this is the circuit diagram for the armature controlled DC servo motor. This is the field side and it is the armature side. Okay. IF is the field current. LF is the field inductance. IF is again the field current and IA armature current. RA and LA are the resistance and the inductance of the armature side. VA is the armature voltage. TM is the torque. EB is the back EMF. J1 is the moment of inertia and B is the damper. So this is the circuit diagram. Let's define all these variables. Let RA is the armature resistance. VA is the armature voltage. This armature voltage, it is variable and it is applied to the armature side. Omega M is the angular velocity. EB is the back EMF. J is moment of inertia. IF is the field current. And LF is the field inductance. So we have defined all the variables. Now let us see that the air flux phi phi it is proportional to field current IF. Okay. So this phi, it will be proportional to IF. Okay. Now if we remove this proportionality sign, we have to introduce a constant. So this constant is KF IF. Okay. Now the field current IF, if we keep this field current as constant and the armature current IA, it will produce a torque. So if we Keep the field current as constant because in the armature controlled servo motor the field current is kept as constant. So field current IF is constant and armature current IA
it will produce the torque Tm. Why this torque is produced? Because we are applying the armature voltage and uh, Va and this armature voltage is being varied. So this torque is produced due to application of Va that is the armature voltage. Now this torque it is in turn it will produce angular shift in the shaft of the motor it will uh, which in turn produces angular shift in the shaft of the motor or in the motor shaft now this torque which is produced that is the tm it is proportional to this flux phi so the produced torque tm is proportional to the flux phi and the armature current Ia which is producing it okay so the torque Tm it is proportional to flux phi and armature current and flux is proportional to the field current so if we write the equation for it it will become the torque Tm it is proportional to phi flux and the armature current Ia now remove this proportionality sign and we also know that flux it is proportional to if and we have found out that if we remove this proportionality sign we can introduce the constant kf if so putting the value of phi here we will have kf if ia now remove this proportionality sign we will have kt Kf, If and Ia. Kt is a constant, Kf is a constant and this field current we have already kept it as constant. So we have these three as a constant in it. So instead of these three constants we will replace it with a single constant K1 and this is Ia and K1 is equal to Kt, Kf and if okay so this is the torque and this torque is proportional to the armature current so as the speed of the motor shaft increases a back emf EB is induced in the armature circuit. Now this back EMF it is proportional to To the speed of the motor shaft and the direction of the back EMF it is given by is opposite to the armature input voltage V a. Okay. So the as the speed of the motor it is increasing, a back EMF will be induced, and this back EMF is proportional to the speed of the motor shaft, and direction of the back EMF is opposite to the armature input 
voltage. So if we write the equation for the back EMF, it will be back EMF. We have said that it is proportional to the angular speed of the shaft that is omega. So remove this proportionality sign, we will have KB and omega can be written as d theta by dt. So this is our first equation. Let us give it a number first equation. Now if we apply Kirchhoff's current law in the armature circuit we will get let's first see the diagram here we are having the armature circuit. Now if we apply the KCL then the total voltage drop that is VA it will be equals to IARA okay this current plus LA DIA by DT plus this back EMF. So the voltage drop across the resistance, voltage drop across inductor plus this back EMF will be equal to VA. So applying the Kirchhoff's current law that is KCL in the armature circuit we get VA that is the armature voltage is equal to voltage drop across resistance IARA plus LA DIA by DT that is voltage drop across the inductor plus the back EMF. Okay, Number this equation as second. Now the load torque equation of the motor equation is given by video is in continuation of the control system component servo motors. So the law of to uh, load torque equation it is given by J d2 theta by dt square plus it is the force due to the moment of inertia. Now we have the damper that is the B. So due to it we will have B D theta by DT. And this whole force it will be equal to the torque induced in the circuit. So we have Tm. We have already written that Tm it is equal to K1 IA. We have already derived it. So number this equation as 3. Now we have these three equations. Now taking the Laplace transform of the equations we will get First equation, from first equation we will have the Laplace transform of EB will be EBS equals to KB is a constant so it will be written as it is and the Laplace transform of D theta by DT is S theta S. Okay, number this equation as 4. Now taking Laplace transform of second equation we will have VAS equal to I A S R A plus L A D I A by D T. So we have S L A I A S plus E B S. Okay. So if we shift this E B S to the left hand side, we will get V A S minus E B S will be equal to IAS can be taken as common so it is RA plus SLA IAS. Number this equation as fifth. Now taking Laplace transform of third equation we will have this is J d2 theta by dt square so its Laplace transform will be S square J and theta s plus s b theta s 
equals to TMS and K1 IAS. So if we take common here, theta S as common, so it will be S square, JS square plus BS theta s equal to tm number this equation as sixth so we have these three equations fourth fifth and sixth now from this fifth equation it will if we took the value of uh, ias it will be from equation number fifth we have IAS as VAS minus EBS upon divided by RA plus SLA. So we have VAS minus or we can say that if we put the value of EBS from this fourth equation, so we will have IAS equal to VAS minus EBS is KBS theta S. So minus KBS theta S divided by same as it is the denominator. So this is the value of IAS. Now we have this sixth equation. So putting the value of IAS in this equation, we will get substitute IAS in equation 6. We get here we have JS squared plus BS theta s equal to k1 and ias is so we have put the value of ias from this equation to this so let's solve it we have theta s it will be equals to we are multiplying here we are having j s square plus b s then multiply this here las plus ra upon we have k1 plus this kb s equals to vas okay we have if we multiply this k1 inside then it will be k1 kb s theta s and when we have shifted this to left hand side because theta s terms will be in left hand side and bs term will be in right hand side so we have to obtain the ratio of theta s and vas so it will be equal to reciprocal of that k1 upon js square plus bs LAS plus RA plus K1 KB S. Okay, so this is the ratio of theta S and VS. Now to form the transfer function, let's so simplify it further. We have theta S by VAS equal to first put the term. here LAS plus RA and then divide this whole term with 1 plus K1 KBS upon JS square plus BS LAS plus RA okay so this we have obtained here the 
theta s and v s the relationship between these two and this is the transfer function because it is the ratio of the laplace transform of the output and the input okay output is the angular displacement or angular movement of the shaft and vas is the input voltage so if we draw the block diagram of this servo motor dc servo motor armature controlled then we have the input is vas so this is a error detector here we are having the input vas this is our second input eb Yes, that is the back EMF. Now this is multiplied with what we have 1 upon LAS plus RA. Then we have K1 and our output is theta s now this output it is feed back to the this error detector and it is multiplied with s k b so we are getting the equation that e b s we have obtained it s k b theta s we have obtained it here earlier and what theta s was it was vas and multiplied with all these transfer function if we solve this block diagram then we are going to get this transfer function only so we have drawn the block diagram of the armature controlled dc motor So this was all about the armature controlled DC motor. Now let's study the field controlled DC servo motor. Study the second type of DC servo motor, field controlled DC servo motor. Now in this field control DC servo motor we will keep the armature current as constant and we will vary the field current okay. So what we are doing here, we are keeping the variable input voltage Vf as uh, we are applying it and we are keeping the armature current as constant. Earlier in armature control, we have uh, kept the armature current, uh, armature voltage as varying and we are keeping the field current as constant. Here we are doing the reverse of it. So this type of DC servo motor is known as field controlled DC servo motor because the control is on the field side. Now the output of this DC servo motor, field controlled DC servo motor, it is the angular shift in the motor shaft so here also the output of the motor it is the angular shift that is the angular displacement theta okay so let's draw the circuit diagram for this field controlled dc servo motor we have Here we are applying the input that is the field voltage 
and this field voltage is variable this is the field resistance rf and this is the field inductance lf okay now this current is if that is the field current now draw the armature side this is the motor shaft and the current flowing through it is the armature current and here we are applying the force J1B or the torque produces J1B and here Tn okay so this is the armature side of the motor and it is the field side of the motor so this is the circuit diagram for the field control DC servo motor now let's define the variables for it so let RF is the field resistance LF is the field inductance Theta is the angular displacement of the motor shaft. Tm is the torque. Developed by the motor. B is the coefficient of the viscous friction. Viscous friction means the friction due to a liquid, okay, some oil or some liquid will be used. So the friction provided by it, we have the coefficient of viscous friction as B and J is the moment of inertia. Okay, IA that is the armature current. It is kept constant and because we have kept it constant the motor shaft is controlled by the field side that is the input voltage or the field voltage so motor shaft is controlled by the input voltage v f okay now as we have kept this ia as constant so as this input voltage vf is applied A current IA flows through the field circuit and this current it will produce a flux in the machine and this flux it will produce the torque at the motor shaft so input voltage it is applied and it is producing due to which the current is flowing and current is producing the flux flux is further producing the torque and due to this torque an angular shift takes place in the motor shaft 
so these all these things are linked in the input we have applied the voltage this is our input voltage input voltage due to which a current if is flowing current is producing flux flux is producing the torque at the motor shaft and this torque produces the angular shift in the motor shaft so ultimately what we are getting in the input we are applying the voltage and at the output we are getting the angular shift okay so let's derive the equations for it we have now this torque which is produced at the motor shaft it will be proportional to the angular shift so torque is tm and it is proportional to the this field current which is producing it so if we remove this proportionality sign we have the constant kf if okay and what is this constant it is motor torque constant we will call it as motor torque constant now the equation in the field circuit if we write the equation for the field circuit or if we apply the kcl that is kirchhoff's uh, current law in the uh, we apply the kcl and kvl in the field circuit we will get the field equation as vf equals to rf if that is the voltage drop across the resistance plus the voltage drop across the inductance dif by dt this video is in continuation of the topic the control system component servo motors so this is the field equation now if we write the torque equation it will be given by torque equation is j d2 theta by dt square plus b d theta by dt it is equal to the torque which is induced in the machine so this is the torque equation so we have three equations tm equals to kf if we have the field equation and we have this torque equation now if you take the laplace transform of these equations if we take the laplace transform of this equation number second we will get s lf plus rf if s equals to vf s and if we take the laplace transform of this torque equation we will get s square j plus bs theta s equals to tm s and from the first equation we have tm s equal to kf if s okay now from these two equations fourth and fifth if we substitute the values of ifs from here to in this fifth equation we will get the ratio of theta s and vf s as kf upon s lf plus rf and we have s squared j plus bs so what it is it is the transfer function of the field controlled dc servo motor because it is the ratio of the output that is the angular shift of the motor shaft and the laplace transform of the input that is the field voltage so it is the transfer function of the field control dc servo motor now from this transfer function if we draw the block diagram then it will be we have here the input and input is vf s the field voltage and this input voltage it is multiplied by
and here we are getting the output and output is what we are getting theta s okay so it is the block diagram representation of field controlled dc servo motor so we have derived the transfer functions and we have studied both the types of the dc servo motors armature controlled and field controlled dc servo motors now let's see the differences between these two servo motors So the first difference is the armature control DC servo motors they give better performance because they are having closed loop as you see the block diagram which we have represented or which we have drawn for both the armature and field control if you have noticed that the armature controlled motor was having the control system as closed loop so we have uh, in a closed loop control system we have the specifications or we have the criteria to compare the input and the feedback signal or the feedback signal is the output signal so we can compare these signals and we can make corrections in it so armature control dc motor is giving us better performance as compared to the field control dc servo motor because it is having an open loop control system so our major control it is giving better performance because it is having closed loop control diagram and the field control dc servo motor it is giving us poor performance due to open loop structure now the second difference between the two is that the inductance of the armature circuit it is small or negligible and hence due to this uh, because this inductance is a small so the torque which is produced it is also very small and hence the pa is negligible and this reduces the order of the system equations also so if the inductance is a small the torque is negligible and due to this the order of the system equations is also reduced so it has a simplified uh, mathematical model because equations are linear they will be having less order either one or two so it is easy to solve the equations of the this system and whereas in this field controlled dc servo motor the inductance of the field circuit here we are having the inductance of the armature circuit and here we are having the inductance of the field circuit it is not negligible so this it offers significant pm that is the torque 
Now third difference is that the speed of response of this armature controlled DC servo motor to the changing inputs it is very fast. So speed of response of the motor to changing current is fast whereas in field control DC servo motor the speed of response of the motor to changing current is slow okay now the last difference between these armature and field control dc servo motor is In this armature control DC servo motor, the damping due to the armature resistance and the friction of the motor. Due to this damping of the armature resistance and motor friction, an extra damping is produced. And this increased damping, it improves the transient response of the system whereas in the field controlled DC servo motor improved damping is not possible okay so these were the differences let's summarize them that what we have uh, written in these differences first difference is armature control dc motor it is giving better performance whereas the field control dc uh, servo motor it is giving poor performance better performance because it is giving us uh, it is having closed loop control system and here we are having open loop structure now the inductance here it is a small and therefore the torque is negligible so it will reduce the order of the system equations whereas in the field control dc servo motor inductance is not negligible so it will offer significant torque the third is that the speed of response of the motor to the changing current it is fast whereas in field control the speed of response is slow and the last difference is that in armature we have increased damping so it will improve the transient response of the system whereas in field control the damping is not improved and there is no criteria to improve the damping in it so these were the differences between the armature control dc servo motor and field control dc servo motor so we have completed the dc servo motor next we will study about the ac servo motors